I'm here in Graceland Cemetery, which is a giant old cemetery on the north side of Chicago where some of the most influential Chicagoans are buried. And there are some complex characters here. I'm going to tell you about a few of them. Here we have Alan Pinkerton, the personal security guard to Abraham Lincoln when he was president. Pinkerton is a Scottish immigrant who founded the Pinkerton Detective Agency, a private security firm that uses an all-seeing eye as its logo. So whenever you hear the term private eye, you can think of Pinkerton. The Pinkerton Detective Agency, incidentally, is known for breaking up the homestead strike and being contracted by the government to do that in 1892. That then led to the 1893 Anti-Pinkerton Act, so uh, you can't do that anymore if you're the government. No uh, contracting with private security firms to uh, bust unions. This extremely imposing Corinthian column here is for George Pullman. Pullman founded a rail car making company and he built essentially this workers' utopia for workers and management to live together just south of Chicago. It was a village called Pullman and it had a marketplace and homes of different sizes so that everyone could live together in harmony. Unfortunately, Pullman decided, because I guess he was running a little low on funds, to raise his workers' rents and not raise their wages. The workers unionized, and there was a giant strike in 1894 that shut down most of the rail system in the country. And uh, Pullman is just a really fascinating, complex character. First of all, his work led to black men to be hired uh, on train cars as porters, and they became known as Pullman porters. Uh, that was one of the first uh, major sources of non-agricultural employment for black people in the United States. But of course, there was no place for the Pullman porters to live or call home in the actual town of Pullman. George Pullman also built this giant mansion for himself and then instead of letting his kids inherit it, actually had it burned down before he died. So there's, there, there's some story there that uh, none of us know. And also Pullman is still around today. It's a neighborhood in Chicago now and it looks very similar to the way it looked in the 1890s. The homes are still there, the old market square and the hotel, and you can get a tour there from the historical society there that's actually very, very pro-George Pullman in the, uh, the, the way they tell the story, which is fascinating and a little bit creepy, just how big this guy's legacy is. This stone here is the grave of Ida Noyes, and if you go to the University of Chicago, you know that name because of Ida Noyes Hall. Ida Noyes, I, I thought that she had something to do with women at the University of Chicago since the hall was originally designed as a center for women on campus. But apparently, uh, the construction money for Ida Noyes Hall was actually donated by her husband, Laverne Noyes, after she had already died. Um, and she had nothing to do with the University of Chicago. But Ida Noyes herself went to Iowa State University in the 1850s. She was a college-educated woman, and she became a teacher. So educating women was obviously something that was very important to her. This sleek black stone here is the grave of Mies van der Rohe. The building he built in Bronzeville replaced a famous World's Fair era apartment building called the Mecca, which Gwendolyn Brooks used to work at. She writes about the Mecca and the people that lived there in a long poem called In the Mecca, which begins with a little bit of a call out of Mies van der Rohe. Sit where the light corrupts your face. Mies van der Rohe expires from grace and the fair fables fall. And last but not least, on this little island in the middle of the lake, this stone is for Daniel Burnham. Burnham was one of the architects behind Chicago's first skyscraper, the Rookery Building. And he later went on to become one of the lead planners of the 1893 World's Fair when everyone said, oh, you can't have a World's Fair in Chicago. Chicago is not ready for that to happen. He went and he said, nope, we're gonna do it here anyway. 
His most famous quote, of course, is make no little plans. And indeed, in 1909, after the fair had settled down, he wrote a book that proposed an entire replanning of Chicago. His plan included a lot of really drastic redesigns of Chicago, including a web of streets that would fan out diagonally from this gigantic central roundabout that would have a civic center in it right in the middle of the loop. That giant fan of streets never got built, obviously, but Daniel Burnham's plan did influence the way that the lakeshore of Chicago looks today. I'm really fascinated by cemeteries, especially since I know the stories now of some of these complicated characters from Chicago. And it just fascinates me the ways that people design their own graves. Like, I want an obelisk, or I want a giant Corinthian column, or if you're Daniel Burnham, I want my own private island. <laughs> or if you're Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, I want a nice little sleek gray stone on the ground. It's just amazing that even in death, we want our memorials to be evocative of our personalities when we were alive. I don't believe in an afterlife, but I still care about how people will think of me after I'm dead. Anyway, just a weird little lesson on Chicago history today. See you tomorrow.